This is our risk discussion video for bariatric surgery at Unity Point. The disease of obesity increases the incidence of many health conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, high cholesterol, joint pain, and stress urinary incontinence. You are probably all too familiar with the significant impact living with obesity has on the quality of life. There is no doubt that significant and sustained weight loss can decrease health risks and improve quality of life. For most people, weight loss programs including diet, exercise, and weight loss medications do not lead to significant, sustained, long-term weight loss success. For this reason, many patients consider metabolic and bariatric surgery which does lead to significant and long-term weight loss in addition to improvement or even resolution of several obesity-related medical conditions for many patients. We generally offer two bariatric surgery options here at Unity Point, the sleeve gastrectomy and the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. While there are specific benefits and risks of each surgery, both have been shown to result in greater than 50% of excess body weight loss long-term in most patients. In addition to weight loss, these surgeries have been shown to improve health conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obstructive sleep apnea, and heart disease, amongst many others. Bariatric surgery has also been shown to decrease the long-term relative risk of death and some types of cancers when compared to patients with obesity who are treated with medical weight loss therapy alone. Bariatric surgery is not for everyone. It is important to understand the risks and benefits involved when making this decision. While there are many benefits to bariatric surgery, these surgeries are major abdominal operations. Overall, bariatric surgery is safe and has a similar risk as gallbladder surgery or knee replacement surgery. However, as with any surgery, there are risks and potential complications. The gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy have some risks in common and other risks that are unique to each specific operation. With advances in surgical equipment, technology, and training, both procedures are now performed using a laparoscopic or robotic surgical approach rather than the historical open surgery approach. Laparoscopic and robotic surgery offers many benefits including smaller surgical incisions, lower risk for wound infections, quicker recovery, less postoperative pain, a shorter hospital stay, and a quicker return to work. The risks common to both gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy include blood clots, postoperative bleeding, stomach stenosis or narrowing, kidney stone formation, gallstone formation, dumping syndrome, and others that we will talk more about. There is a documented mortality or death rate associated with metabolic and bariatric surgery. The current literature indicates the risk of dying from this surgery at 0.1 to 0.3, or 1 to 3 out of 1,000 patients. That is similar to the risk of dying after gallbladder surgery. Although this risk is extremely rare, it is not zero. Blood clots, also called deep venous thromboses or DVTs, typically form in the leg and are not life-threatening. Blood clots can also form in veins that drain blood from your abdominal organs and can cause abdominal pain. The risk of developing a blood clot after surgery is approximately 1 to 2 percent. These clots are usually treated with long-term blood thinners while the body dissolves the clot over time. If a DVT in the leg or pelvis breaks free and travels to the lungs, that can lead to a life-threatening condition called a pulmonary embolism, or PE. The risk of pulmonary embolism is approximately half of 1%. Although the risk is low, pulmonary embolism is the most common cause of death after bariatric surgery. Because of this, we take prevention very seriously. We use three prevention measures 
to lower the risk of blood clots in our patients. First, a small dose of blood thinner is generally given preoperatively and is used until discharge home from the hospital. Second, leg squeezers are used during surgery and while you are recovering in the hospital postoperatively. Third, walking as soon as possible after surgery is encouraged and helps to minimize blood clot formation. Most patients are able to walk within a few hours after surgery. Some patients who are at higher risk for blood clots may be placed on a blood thinner at home after surgery to lower this risk. While necessary to reduce the risk of blood clots, using blood thinners somewhat elevates the risk of postoperative bleeding. We try to maintain a fine balance between the prevention of blood clots and keeping the risk of bleeding low. Postoperative bleeding is sometimes seen in our patients within one to two days after surgery. If bleeding is suspected or detected, the first treatment is to stop the blood thinner, which quickly restores your natural blood clotting pathway. If bleeding is significant, a blood transfusion may be necessary. Usually, bleeding stops after the discontinuation of the blood thinner. However, sometimes a return to surgery is necessary to stop ongoing bleeding. The overall risk of having a bleeding complication is less than 5%, with the risk of requiring a return to the operating room due to bleeding is less than 1%. Another potential complication for both procedures is called stenosis or narrowing of the food passageway due to scar tissue formation. For the gastric bypass, this narrowing can occur at the connection between the gastric pouch and the small intestine. For the sleeve, the narrowing can occur along the staple line. In both cases, this narrowing can impede food passage and cause pain, nausea, or vomiting. While the common cause of vomiting is eating too much or too quickly, Patients who persistently have pain or vomiting shortly after eating may have stenosis. Treatment is usually endoscopic dilation or surgery. The risk of developing stenosis is approximately 1 to 3 percent and typically occurs 1 to 3 months after surgery when healing levels are at their peak. Patients who still have their gallbladders are at risk of forming gallstones after bariatric surgery due to rapid weight loss. We do not routinely remove the gallbladder during bariatric surgery because this further complicates an already complicated procedure. Some patients may need to have their gallbladder surgically removed at some point after surgery if symptoms develop. Patients who still have their gallbladders will be prescribed a medication for six months after surgery to lower the risk of forming gallstones. Additionally, the risk of forming kidney stones increases after gastric bypass surgery. Some patients may pass kidney stones without intervention, but others may require medication or procedures to treat these stones if they develop. Heart attacks are also possible and fortunately very rare. The risk of heart attack increases with age and in patients with underlying heart disease. Depending on your risk factors, you may be required to undergo preoperative cardiac testing to further assess and optimize your individual risk. Other non-life-threatening complications could occur, such as chronic nausea and abdominal pain. Approximately 2-3% to of patients have a period of prolonged nausea, often for no identifiable reason. Sometimes this can be treated with medication or dietary changes, but this can adversely affect lifestyle. In the majority of cases, nausea subsides with time, but this could take several weeks to months in rare circumstances. Dumping syndrome is typically related to consuming a high carbohydrate or high sugar food or drink. This can cause flushing, cramping, bloating, abdominal pain, nausea, or diarrhea. Low blood sugar levels can also occur that make patients feel woozy or like they are going to pass out. Many patients will experience some hair thinning or hair loss during the rapid weight loss phase of recovery. Although the exact cause is uncertain, it is likely due to protein imbalance. Hair does not completely fall out like that seen with chemotherapy 
but some hair loss or thinning are common. Once the weight loss peaks, hair typically grows back. Vitamin, iron, and protein deficiencies can also occur after surgery. It is important to follow nutritional guidelines after surgery and to take the recommended vitamin and mineral supplements to help prevent some of these issues. We will check these levels before surgery and every year following surgery. Increased supplementation will be prescribed if deficiencies are detected. Newer data on bariatric surgery outcomes also suggests an increase or uncovered risk of some psychiatric disturbances after surgery. These include depression, alcohol abuse, and even suicide. We do our best to screen patients with risk factors for these issues pre- and post-operatively. It is important to remember that we have support in place to help with any problems related to behavioral or mental health and addiction if they arise. Both the gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy have risks that are unique to each specific operation. Additional risks of sleeve gastrectomy include staple line leak and heartburn. Additional risks of gastric bypass include anastomotic leak, ulcer, bowel obstruction, or severe hypoglycemia. We will discuss each of these next. During a gastric bypass, the intestinal tract is divided in two locations, rerouted, and then the bowel is reattached in two separate locations. The sites for reattachment are called anastomoses. One rare complication of this operation is that one of these attachment sites can leak. This is called an anastomotic leak. The frequency of this happening is less than 2% nationally. A leak would mean that intestinal fluid gets outside of the intestinal tract and contaminates the abdominal cavity. In certain circumstances, this can lead to severe infection and even death. During surgery, we check for anastomotic leaks. After we create the anastomoses in the operating room, we place a camera down the esophagus and look at this area from the inside. We also fill the pouch with air and bathe the outside in water to look for bubbles, just like an inner tube test. However, leaks can form after surgery is over. An anastomotic leak is typically not a long-term risk. Over the next several weeks, your body will seal the anastomosis permanently. On rare occurrences, if the body does not heal the anastomosis properly, a leak can occur after hospital discharge, one to two weeks after surgery. If a leak occurs, another surgery or procedure may be needed to try to get the leak to heal. A temporary feeding tube may also be indicated. The healing process can take several weeks, and if the infection spreads to the bloodstream, this complication, called sepsis, could be life-threatening. Some of the warning signs to watch out for that signal an anastomotic leak are fever, chills, racing heart rate, abdominal pain, and shortness of breath. If you develop any of these symptoms, you must notify us immediately so that we can examine you right away. A complication that could occur days, weeks, or even years after gastric bypass is a bowel obstruction. As with any surgery, scar tissue can form which can lead to loops of intestine sticking together or to other structures. Twisting or kinking can occur leading to bowel obstruction. Something unique to gastric bypass is that spaces are created to reroute the intestines during surgery. Sometimes, Loops of bowel can slip into these spaces, causing the bowel to become kinked and obstructed. This is called an internal hernia. If left untreated, the kink could also cut off blood supply, leading to ischemia of the bowel, which is a surgical emergency. Though we close these spaces at the time of surgery, we are closing fatty tissue to other fatty tissue. With weight loss, these spaces may reopen up there is about a 5% chance lifetime of developing an internal hernia. This could happen the day after surgery or at any time during your life. Warning signs of a bowel obstruction would be severe, crampy abdominal pain, nausea, and sometimes vomiting. If a bowel obstruction or internal hernia is suspected, 
surgery is oftentimes needed to untangle the bowel. This surgery can be performed laparoscopically, but sometimes requires an open procedure. If left untreated, bowel obstructions can be life-threatening. In the sleeve gastrectomy, a staple line is created along the stomach, dividing the stomach into two segments. The larger section of the stomach is removed, leaving a tube or banana-shaped stomach behind. This surgery is not reversible because a portion of the stomach is removed from the body. A potential complication unique to sleeve gastrectomy is heartburn or acid reflux. The development of new heartburn symptoms or worsening of existing heartburn symptoms is a potential complication. Either prior to surgery or at the time of your surgery, you will have an upper endoscopy to look for potential changes in the lining of the esophagus related to reflux disease. If after undergoing a sleeve gastrectomy, your reflux becomes so severe that medications cannot control it, you may require a laparoscopic conversion from a sleeve to a gastric bypass. This happens 1-2% to 2 of the time. Having said this, many patients with mild reflux will experience significant improvement after sleeve gastrectomy and may not need to take long-term anti-reflux medications. One rare but devastating complication of sleeve gastrectomy is leak along the staple line. The frequency of this happening is less than 1%. If a staple line leak occurs, it allows food you have eaten to leave the stomach and enter the abdominal cavity where it does not belong. A leak is a potentially life-threatening complication if left untreated. Even with treatment, staple line leaks can be problematic and in some cases take weeks or even months to heal. We use a similar technique to check for leaks during the sleeve gastrectomy operation. Rarely, leaks have the potential to turn into long-term or chronic problems where the leak can turn into connections to other organs in the body such as the heart, lung, liver, spleen, intestines, or out through the skin. This is called a fistula. Contrary to some perceptions in the media, bariatric surgery is not an easy way out. Having bariatric surgery does not guarantee that you will lose your desired amount of weight. Surgery is a tool that you can use in addition to adherence to a healthy diet and physical activity program to lose weight and live a healthier life. With either procedure, there is a possibility of weight recurrence, which is often related to return of old habits. The changes made shortly after surgery need to be followed for the rest of your life in order to have the best long-term weight loss results with the least risk of complications. This completes the risk discussion, and though not all-inclusive, this does include the majority of major risks and complications of bariatric surgery. Other risks and complications are possible in patients with specific underlying health conditions. This would be addressed on an individual basis. Please consider these complications of surgery carefully. We have been fortunate to have outcomes that compare favorably to the rest of the country, However, everyone's individual risk tolerance is different, and you should carefully consider these with your family and bariatric surgery team to determine whether or not bariatric surgery is right for you.